Blog Talk Radio. Good morning. This is your host, Lorraine Neidhart at Venus Unplugged. And what we do here is explore the archetypal energies of Venus, uh, both as goddess in our personal lives, as psyche, as um, her son Eros, uh, Venus's son Eros, all the things that make us connect, the language of dreams and myth. And uh, today, I was thinking, hmm, what is this year? And I'm sure at this point, for those of you that are sensitive to Mercury retrogrades, this particular one is just making people want to bang their heads against the wall. Uh, but it won't last forever. And we get to get to redo things and look at things that we never saw before. And certainly I was thinking, you know, manifestation, truth or dare, what's really going on? Besides that this is going to be the quickest year in existence. But uh, I don't know if you know the game, truth or dare, uh, if you know, you're know, you asked a question and if you don't want to tell the truth about it, then you're given a dare. Sometimes a double dare. It feels a little bit like the gods are doing that, uh, particularly this week, truth or dare. So whatever one's truth is, if we don't want to tell it to ourselves, we're going to get a dare. Sometimes the, the daring, which is probably the greatest dare of them all, is to become conscious. Because that's part of what love is. Love isn't just the those zhuzhi marvelous feelings. It's also the the ruthlessness of love, the thing that will bring us down. Because uh, most of us relate to uh, the image or the symbol of love as the fall in love. But love without projection, that's a completely different love. Completely. That's the one that takes knowing yourself. Because if you know yourself, you won't project so much onto another or you'll know that you're projecting. Or when you're in relationships, which is uh, one of the most important learning capabilities that we have. Uh, Last night I was listening to... uh, uh, a podcast called Unbeing. And uh, they were talking about, uh, of course, Martin Luther King and the, the whole civil rights movement. And, you know, as I was listening to it, just kind of in a diffused kind of way, which is really m- more the feminine, where, where it's just kind of diffused, you're letting it flow through you, you're not, you know, your ego isn't involved in decision making and what's, what's not truth or whatever it might be, you're just experiencing it. And suddenly I became acutely aware that at that that period of time, which we're still exploring, okay, the collective unconscious really kind of had like a volcano. It just split up uh, and it said, no, you know, this, this, this war of oppositions, or it's got to change, you know. And so much of what has happened since, and is still continuing to happen, because as long as we want only one side of reality, uh, we're going to have troubles, or we have uh, gods or goddesses that uh, give us permission to destroy others with a different perspective, well, that's kind of trippy. You know, the interesting thing with with Jung and and his four types, which is easy to repeat, it's not so easy to apply, okay, but his his four types, the thinking type, the feeling type, the sensei type, um, and the intuitive type. So these are those four aspects, and each one of us has a superior function and an inferior function, uh, which just means the superior function is the one that we, that's our go-to person. That's the one that's easy breezy, right? Uh, 
the inferior function is the one that is harder because we don't use it as much. But also in communication or in the world of truth and dare, we need to understand that there, at any dynamic, there's at least four possible truths. Because whatever is your, your superior function, that's how you're going to view it. If it's a feeling, you're going to you're going to feel it. You know the the emotional value of it is going to be the thing that's going to uh, be the most important. If it's sensate, it, which is in the here and now, it's the most practical. What's going on right now? And so, which is fascinating, if we could kind of withdraw our projections, if that's possible, it's, it takes great courage and and uh, practice that we begin to recognize, all right, so what does my feeling function see about this? Or what is my thinking about this? And we begin to see it from all these different aspects. And suddenly, we have a, a much greater picture. Just like I think I mentioned it last week, too. It's, you know, now now the word partner it used to pretty much mean, you know, either a, you know, a law firm or... You know, male and female and marriage, and now we got a whole new box of crayons. So something is coming up from the collective unconscious that says, "You know, no, no, we need to explore this. We need not judge it, but this needs to happen in the culture because the culture needs to change. Because in some cultures." Um, certainly uh, transgender and all these these awakenings to the American psyche, particularly, um, we need to include this, does mean something for the culture. It's not a perversion. It's an awakening. And of course, it always comes out a little crooked or a little breech birth. So what? But we're demanded see things in a different way or we resist and withhold and try to hold back evolution or a movement that the culture needs to know to broaden its possibilities its respect its its hidden treasures so if we begin to realize in this truth and dare kind of year we're going to have, the thing that you cannot sacrifice is stronger than you. That is your God. Yep, that's it. The thing you cannot sacrifice is stronger than you. That is your God. And if that is so, you must acknowledge it, and that makes the difference between a, a moral and an immoral attitude towards life. Whatever one's worships, and pretty much, you know, our addictions are pretty much the name of the God that we don't want to give up. And that's the truth. The dare would be, I dare to be stronger than the God that is wounding me. Or I dare, I mean, there's nothing more dangerous and daring than becoming conscious. That's the single most important act of, of uh, not only individuation, which is a term for one's wholeness, but it also moves the culture further. And not only does it move it further, but by learning how to, you know, what's really going on here? A lot of people don't believe um, that the collective unconscious is the thing that's really running the show. And that they'll, they'll find out one day, or or they won't. 
So when we realize that each function type, now we always have all four functions within us. We just made, you know, our, you know, our first observation will be our superior function, that each function type has a special way of viewing uh, whatever the situation may be. But there's three others, uh, possibilities, which, you know, may not be true for you, but they are true for others, or vice versa. Again, truth or dare. And four is always the number of wholeness. In some cultures, it's actually the number of death. They stay away from it. Chinese don't like the number four. They skip around that. So, in recognizing and in consciously, you know, keep your commitments and be accountable. There are no accidents that lead people uh, to accountability. It's all part of the the storyline. So, by recognizing, you know, so which, which, who's my God? That, that alone, because it's the thing we can't give up. So if it's drugs or rock and roll or food or money or, or, or sex or, or it could be love addictions, okay, the falling in love kind. So I was looking, of course, at my beloved uh, Robert Johnson, who I, I love his books. Cause he's, he writes <clears throat> in such a simple manner, but he's really like smacking you upside your head. Okay. And so I'm going to read this little couple of paragraphs here, because this is what's going to get us through this truth or dare dynamic. Either way, if you want to tell the truth, you know, the old saying, tell the truth and shame the devil, which it it does do, because then the gig's up. It's the end. It's just the truth. I mean, if somebody else wants to carry it on, they could do that. But, you know, there's that. It it does free. So uh, he talks here about taking inwardly what is inward. And he states here, all effect is interior. Any emotional impact we experience is inside of us. If someone were to denounce, he talks about himself here, if someone were to denounce me, spreading all the gossip and defamation uh, he might find, I would probably wither. It would weigh me down. But the withering is my interior matter. If you hurt my feelings, it is an interior matter for me. If you accuse me of having green hair, that won't bother me. It's not true, I'll say. But if you announce that uh, I was rude today, yesterday, uh, I'll have to duck. If it has an impact, it means that there is a war inside of you. You set it off, but what you set off is my business. Okay. Anything that can burn in a person should burn. And that's a very interesting image in, in alchemy because you, you're burning, you go through a burning. Uh, it's the dross matter that's being burnt up. And it's not pleasant. So he states here, if you can hurt my feelings, they are better off hurt because it's an error in me. Wow, talk about truth or dare. Who could take that truth? That takes a lot of consciousness and a lot of love and a lot of purification you know, by fire. So to take inwardly what is inward is the great art. And he states, I'm getting better at it. I don't get my feelings hurt as much anymore, but there are still things that make me wince. That means there are things inside me I haven't dealt with yet, 
one of the most powerful realizations we can have is that all effect is interior and needs to be understood and worked on in an interior way. This is this is the dare. Dare to withdraw the projection and just say, well, perhaps, where could this be true? Where could this be hiding? But not an, as an attack, but in a, in a noble and loving way that says, oh, no, 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 no. There was an a, actually an interesting yesterday. I went out to a, to a, a theater piece at St. Anne's, and uh, we were on the train, and we got on the wrong train, so we decided to take a taxi. And there was a, a man, and he was very upset with the other taxi cab driver, and who was really his mortal enemy. And he went on and on and on uh, about how this man, the first taxi driver wouldn't take anybody unless it was he saw that they had suitcases because he wanted the long uh, rides and this man just thought he was just a terrible person in all his entitlement so I listened and I said yeah but wait a second he's giving you work you like taking the, the, the short rides back and forth and you wind up making more money he hasn't figured that out so the very per- person who's so irritating, in truth, was giving him extra work because they would have taken him first. So sometimes we have to see where is that gold? There's always gold in the shit, always. We may not recognize it, but it's there. So uh, here's uh, Johnson, what he talks about here is the inner gold, all right, and how we project our gold onto others that person has the gift or the talent I don't or stay there where I worship you because I don't really feel like getting my act together so you you can carry this for me Uh, so if someone has your gold or even if and some people take your gold and never give it back like a narcissistic parent no you're talented because you're my child that's taking your gold you better go get your gold back if someone has your gold or even if you just think they've taken your gold, and then they uh, displease you, you might become furious. Knowing what is going on at a deeper level can save you from this kind of suffering. You have no right to be dependent on anyone or jealous of them. You have no right to be lonely. My saying this won't cure you in a day, but it might be the beginning of a cure. Dr. Fran Franz uh, nearly knocked me over when she said, shyness is just arrogance. And here he states, I'm the shyest person on the earth. She spoiled it for me. I love his honesty. He's such a decent, honest human being. Uh, so when we reclaim our projections, when we find ourselves clinging to someone, caught in the unconscious grip or illegitimate demand on him or her, it is difficult but possible to let go. Dr. Veron Franz helped me with this when she said, don't behave as though your projection is a dog you, have, uh, you can uh, whistle home anytime you want. The next time you ask someone to carry your gold, make an effort to know what's going on. Stay in contact with your own gold and as you put it on someone else. If you ask her to carry the numinous the -the glow-in-the-dark quality for you, understand that doing so will obscure uh, her from you as a person. A lot of times in love, we want want the beloved to carry the gold because we don't really want to do the work. We don't want to see them as real. No, you do that for me. And then when they refuse the projection or demand consciousness in some usually strange way, Uh, quite upset. Being alive is very active. It's engaging. Even Even in a passive state, there's such enormous movement, rhythm, motion, laws of the universe. 
part of the laws of manifestation. So as we're working towards the manifestation, we stay in the consciousness that it is done. We know it is done. And one day we meet it. Because it is done. We're the ones that just don't know how to claim it. So naming the process helps. It is the beginning of consciousness. Why do I have such a strong feeling when I look at her? Do I really see her? Do I love her or him? Or am I in love with her or him? Putting a bell jar of the luminous over her or him, which obliviates her from my sight. We are rarely conscious of what is going on. And our gold is bouncing around everywhere, out of control. Alchemical, inner gold, our most precious possession, is like sputtering all over the street. Like the taxi driver, he didn't know he was getting gold. And he just stopped. So it would probably take him a couple of days for that to sink in. Uh, so we barely understand how much of what we perceive in others and the outside world are actually parts of ourselves. Please observe the energy investments you make. The exchange of inner gold is occurring all the time. Try to be conscious of it. We cannot contain it in traditional ways. We need to create new languages and new ways for increasing our awareness. So it's like, you know, people can steal gold when they when they uh, take credit for what another did. You can do that through omission or commission. Don't even know that you're doing it. But it is shadow material. Or it's also, you know, it's a theft and a shadow material when you project so violently onto another. Um, and w- without saying, "Okay, I'm going to do this projection," but now I got to now I got to pull this back. Now I got to eat crow. Now I have to do truth or dare. So that's part of you know how I see the truth or dare uh, factor going on, uh, particularly in this in this year. And if we begin to say, "Okay, if I can't give it up." If I don't want to change, that's my God. And that is the one that has power over me. So if you can't sacrifice it, it's stronger than you. If you can't sacrifice the projection, if you can't uh, sacrifice, I don't know, the dry drunk, you know, when people stop an addiction, but they're, they're still, all that behavior is still happening. Right, you stop the behavior. I mean, you, you stop the the uh, substance, but the behavior is going strong. And it's not until people start screaming or reacting or say stop will you become conscious. Very painful. So that's part of the truth and dare too. Who have I projected my gold upon? And now I gotta go get back. So we can just imagine, you know, taking it back and saying, you know, that's a burden for them. And they can't get to to growing. I mean, so often, you know, the the, the child parent dynamic. The child can be carrying the gold for, for the parents, or, or a parent. It's it appears innocent enough, but it's a burden. This child will be the savior. This child will be the lucky one. This child will make me proud. This child, you know, wow, man, chill. Instead of who is this child? Who is this soul that has incarnated? And what is the best path for their evolution? And then the 
child knows their own sense of self, so they don't have to live the parent's unlived life, which is one of the biggest tragedies when when that happens. And it's been happening for centuries, so it's, 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 sometimes it's hard to notice. But it starts with a question. I call it the God whispers. If I'm off and running and thinking, oh, wow, okay, let's just, what's that about? And all of a sudden I get this little voice. It's like, mm mm you're up to something. It's like, well, what do you mean? Or in a dream. You know, let's just say, for instance, you have a dream uh, about shoes, and the shoes are all worn down and broken down, but they're new shoes. It's like, whoa, man, what are you doing? Where are you abusing your stand in life? Or where are you wearing yourself out? Or is that stand in life all worn out? It's not new anymore. You need a new stand. And, you know, or look at, you know, where, you know, has a broken heart ever led you to a more loving life? So there's not a, the divine doesn't allow a, a, a moment of pain to be in vain, ever. Now, the divine doesn't allow that. We skip. And so, uh, you know, kind of the old phrase, you know, gratitude is my attitude, man. And the gratitude for those those truths and those dares in our life, the gratitude, gratitude is a very humbling experience. It's not like, oh, I'm, I'm so grateful for this and I'm so grateful. No, it's like, wow, wow. It's so far greater than I. It's like when when we stand, you know, gratitude has a a little touch of awe in it. And awe, when we're in a state of awe, that's when we're in the presence of the divine. That's why we have awe. That's where we have theater we, 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 or, or uh, nature. Any, anything, you know, you go to the Grand Canyon. I mean, it's a little hard not to be in awe of like, wow. Or you hear something you could never imagine before. Whether you agree with it or not, that's up to the personality or one's ego. But one is still in awe. We can be in awe of... Um, evil just like wow man but the presence of the divinity is there that we can go like wow never saw it that way not going there i'll take the truth forget where the dare is so have an absolutely glorious i know you're going to have an interesting if not wild week of uh transformation and as i said the whole year is pretty pretty um Herding cats. We're going to be herding cats the whole year. So look at where the truth and dare. Make it conscious. Enjoy your folly. We're all divine fools at heart. Well, you can't laugh. The shadow's got you. When something first happens and we don't have a sense of humor... We're caught in the shadow. But then we tell the story months later and we're hysterical. We're out of the shadow. So till next week, bye-bye. Progressive presents Mind Flowness with Flow. Before you lie is a beautiful meadow. In that meadow, Progressive Direct has placed its auto insurance rates alongside those of competitors. You select the lowest rate and feel a great sense of calm. A great sense of calm. Compare Progressive Direct rates with competitors' rates so you can rest easy. Visit Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Comparison rates not available in all states or situations. Prices vary based on how you buy. Very based on how you buy. Very based on how you buy. Very based on how you buy.